Thank you to Kenneth Copeland Ministries for sowing the airtime for this broadcast. There's enough power in every sick room and in every hospital room to raise up that sick one that may be describing you. Yes, you yes. may be in a sick room. Yep. You may be in a hospital room. And I want to remind you, power is present. That power is there to do a work. Believe in what's present, not try to get something, but notice that he's already made it yours. It's present right where you're at. Say, I receive that power. I receive, I receive that power. I receive it right now. I receive it right From now. From the top of my head. From the top of my to head. the soles of my feet. The soles of my feet. Welcome. We're so glad you're joining us today for Jesus the Healer. Come on in. We saved you the best spot. <laughs> and you say, well, where's my spot? Right in front of your device. Um, we're just so thrilled to be able to feed on the Word together. Don't you love the Word? I'm so grateful that you're hungry for the Word and that you, you're hungry not just to hear it, but to be a doer of it, right? It's in the doing that we're blessed. Um, thank God that we need to know something, but knowing has to be followed by the doing. Yes. We have been on a series. We're teaching out of my book called Visitations from God, and it is such a blessing. This is like a sweet spot for me. I love teaching on the direction that we're in in this series. And uh, if you missed any episodes in this series, please go back and watch them. We've been starting each episode in this series by going to Psalm chapter 8 and verse 4. So you can follow along with us. It reads, What is man that thou art mindful of him, and the son of man that thou visitest him? <clears throat> so we see this, that uh, we do receive visitations from God. Yes. Yet we, better yet, we know that we're indwelt by God, right? right? And as New Testament believers, New Covenant believers, born again believers, <clears throat> Um, we recognize that we are the temple of the Holy Ghost. Greater is he that's in us yes. than he that's in the world. Yes. But under the old covenant, uh, it, they, they weren't indwelt by God. And so they had to rely upon, if I could say this, outward visitations, things that would happen in this realm to help communicate to them. But we have a better covenant. Amen. The better covenant of the new covenant means everything they had plus everything they had, but more. So if they had visitations, we still have visitations. Yes. Plus we had the Holy Ghost abiding in us. Yes. We're the temple of the Holy Ghost. Yes. So we don't diminish the other about knowing where we, the Holy Ghost abides in us, but we do recognize, wait a minute, what are the visitations? And so we go to the word to find out what those visitations look like. Luke chapter 19, verse 41, it says, and when Jesus was come near, speaking about coming near Jerusalem, Mm -hmm. It says he wept over it. Mm -hmm. Why is that? Verse 44 tells us why. Because they knew not their time mm -hmm. of their visitation. Mm -hmm. So what was a visitation from God by Bible definition? A God-filled man sent to the people. Right. Yes. Yes. You know what that describes? Our pastor. Our pastor. One of the greatest visitations we will ever have yes. is having a pastor in our lives. Yes. A pastor that we receive from on a regular basis, not one that we just visit here and now, here and again and every, every so often, but no, we're planted where our pastor is. And uh, we recognize that they are a visitation from God. Every time we go to church, God's visiting us. Is every time we hear that word preached, the word being preached is a visitation from God. The word being ministered to us. Do you know you can have a, you can have a demonstrated sermon? Jesus talked about... Um, he talked about how to cast the devil out of people. He said, when the, de when the devil's gone out, said he goes to a dry place seeking rest. He finds none, he comes back. So he taught that and then he demonstrated it. Mm -hmm. That when people that would come and they were, they were held captive by the enemy, he'd cast it out. So they had a sermon and a demonstration. Yeah. Amen. Amen. And uh, that's what our local church services should be. The word of God being preached and demonstrations yes. of that word coming Amen. to pass. Amen. Amen. That's a visitation from God right. when we are in that setting, yes. hearing from God. Um, we would say this, that the five-fold gift ministries are all a visitation from God. Yes. Apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, teacher. But the most important one in the life of the sheep is a pastor because he lives with the sheep. Yes. He lives locally. The others can travel, but... The pastor lives locally. 
Matthew chapter 9 and verse 36, it says, And when Jesus saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion on them, because they fainted and were scattered abroad as sheep having no shepherd. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Now notice, Jesus, wasn't he an apostle? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Wasn't he a prophet? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. But notice, he said, it's, it's the shepherd. Yes. He, was, he was the great shepherd. Yes. It's the shepherd that was causing the sheep to be in the, in the weakened condition they were in, not having a shepherd. And so uh, we need a shepherd. Yes. Every, all sheep yes. need a shepherd. Yes. Amen. So what's our responsibility toward having a pastor? Uh, well, Hebrews chapter 10, verse 25 tells us part of our responsibility. That is not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together. What's that mean? We show up to receive our visitation from God. We show up to receive of that pastoral anointing that protects and safeguards the life of the sheep. And not only that, we come to bring our supply to that local church, right? Praise the Lord. Now, uh, one of the things that I want us to, uh, I want to touch on in this episode is talking about preparation time. Mm-hmm. Every single one of us are called to something. Yes. Every single yes. one of us. Not, now, not everyone in the body of Christ is called to a five-fold public ministry pulpit office, right? right? right. Um, but we're all called to fulfill something. Yes. Every single one of us need to be prepared for that. Yes. Yes. That's right. That's right. We need to be trained. Where is that training, that spiritual training that needs to happen? Where's that going to happen? In the local church with the pastor Uh being the main feeder. Now, there may be others in the church that teach and they assist that pastor in his great work. That's perfectly fine. But no one else will ever take the place of the pastor in that congregation. Uh, as a pastor, I pastored for 25 years. There were teachers that helped us with the children, but they, they still were not the pastor That's right. of the church. And other roles may be an assist to the pastor, but they are no substitute for the anointing of the pastor that rests on one man in that congregation to, to feed and lead those sheep. Amen. So to receive the fulfillment of what God's plan is for life, to walk out that call, we need help to be trained in that. And as I said, that's going to happen with, the, with those that God puts in our life. He will direct you to the, to the church to attend, to the pastor to have. Yes. Right. Amen. Amen. And he will bring them into our lives to help train and equip us yes. for what we're called to do. Now, it's our responsibility to stay under their training. It's our responsibility to be a good student. It's not enough to show up in services, but not be a good student. We need to be a good student. Amen. Amen. And my husband used to say this. He would, he would stress the importance, uh, be a good student. What's a good student? You're doing what you're taught. You're doing what you're taught. Um, we see this in the, in the relationship between Elijah and Elisha. God told Elijah, go anoint Elisha to be prophet in thy room. Notice this, uh, Elijah was a prophet of God and God said, uh, go anoint Elisha to be prophet in thy room. He had to be anointed to be around him. He had to be anointed to be in the same room with Elijah, so to speak, and Elijah demonstrating. This is how the prophet's office works. This is how this flows. And um, so he was being trained. He got a first-rate training, didn't he? Um, And the good thing is when it came time for Elijah's exit, he said to Elisha, what do you want? What do you want me to do for you? Why? Because your faithfulness calls out for me to bring something into your life. What is it that you would like to receive of my life? And he says, I want a double portion of what's on you. So Elijah said to him, if you see me when I leave, when I depart, it'll be true. If you don't see me when I leave, it won't happen. What's that mean? If you leave too soon. If you leave too soon, you won't receive what you've asked. But if you stay to the finish, stay to the finish. Don't get distracted. Don't get sidetracked. Don't get pulled off course. How many people God's put them in a local church, directed them to a pastor, directed them to a congregation to function in, and they left too soon. 
they got excited <laughs> about something else. Uh, okay. Never let anything excite you more than the plan of God. Right. Never let anything draw your attention more than what he put in place for your life. Amen. 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 Um, my husband had a, a, a unique ability to draw out the giftings mm-hmm. in young people. Uh, those who were called to the ministry or those who were just serving as a vital part in that local church. And we should all be serving in a local church somewhere. Why? Because every family member should be doing something in the family household. A local church is a family. Now see, know this, a local church is a family. And in the family, there's duties to be carried out. In the family, we all need to have responsibilities. Don't you have that in your own home? I mean, every family member is expected to do something in that household. And it's not appropriate to sit around and watch others work Mm -hmm. in the household, right? I mean, kids won't put up with that. Mom (laughs) says, get up and clean the kitchen. And uh, one child sits there while three work. No, that's not going to go over well. Mm -mm. (laughs) Well, in the, in the household of God, we should all be doing something. Right. Amen. Amen. Not just show up and then leave as quick as we can. We should become a vital functioning part to bring our supply. Yes. God intends that at the local church he plants us or tells us to be planted in, that we receive a supply, but we also are to bring a supply. Yes. Amen. 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 And so my husband would, he would recognize and help people to recognize what God had for their life. Mm-hmm. And uh, he said, if you'll stay with me, if you won't just get impatient and run off, mm-hmm. we can help you. Mm-hmm. But if you're going to get distracted mm-hmm. and run off too soon, mm-hmm. I can't help you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So that's, that's one of the biggest things for us to learn as we are growing up spiritually. Mm-hmm. Don't leave too soon. Stay where God tells you to stay and let only God be be the one to lead you or direct you elsewhere. Don't let ambition direct you. Don't let just desire to to have something more or to have your own draw you off. I've saw I've saw so many uh, so many through the years that just left too soon. And especially when my husband would be training someone who was young in ministry, they were called to fivefold ministry, but they would just leave too soon. And what's that mean? They're going to miss out on some equipping that they needed. Amen. Listen, God will bring people in our lives to help prepare us and train us for what we're born for. Now it's our responsibility to recognize who those people are Mm -hmm. and get around them as much as possible and become a student to them. Not, it's not about trying to get your own. It's learning from somebody who knows God better than you. So it's our responsibility to get around them. That's what my husband and I did. Uh, Dad Hagen was our spiritual father and we, took it as our responsibility to get around him. Now, I'm not talking about personal time. I'm not talking about trying to get in their home or have dinner or or lunch with them and get special attention. I'm talking about being where they were at, ministering that word. We took took, uh, necessary steps to be there. Amen. 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 Why? Because we knew this, our success was connected to us recognizing that a man of God has something for our life and we better be there. Amen. 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 So I'm not just talking about sheep. It does include this sheep being where their pastor is to get the right thing, Mm -hmm. but also ministers that they need to know who their spiritual father is, who is their boy and get there, be around them at times. You know, uh, I know that, you know, especially if you're a pastor, you got to be home pastoring your sheep, right? Yeah. Every week. But there are special meetings that you need to make sure that you're involved in where your, where your spiritual Amen. father is, Amen. whoever that is. Amen. Amen. Um, why is that? Because being called to something, because we're all called to something, uh-huh. is no substitute for being prepared. That's right. That's right. Amen. Amen. Lack of preparation or a call cannot make up for the lack of preparation. A call, all a call does is kind of show you which direction to prepare. The call doesn't prepare you. The call just shows you the direction to prepare. Amen. Uh, Preparation time is never lost time. You're not wasting years. You're not wasting money. Being, paying whatever price you have to be to be 
where God told you to be. Amen. That's not a waste of time. It's not a loss of money. Yes. It is, a, it is a, an investment yes. into your future. Yes. Amen. 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 Um, many times when people get pulled off course, pulled away from their local church, their pastor, or their spiritual father who God told them to be hooked up with, many times it's because they get tired of the routine. There's much routine in preparation. There's much routine in training. And sometimes that training can look uneventful, but you better be trained. You know, um, just bringing it in this example in is um, I grew up playing the piano. I started when I was, I don't know, 10 years old. I was about in fifth grade. And uh, it became what I majored in, classical piano performance in college. I started every day by playing the same scales, yeah. the same arpeggios, yes. the same technique exercises. And it was very routine, but it was the routine that helped me to accelerate. It was the routine that helped me to advance. Spiritually, there's much routine in your preparation. You go to the same church, you sit under the same pastor, you read the Bible, you do your routine every day, but your success is locked up in your routine. And if people get bored with the routine, they will start devaluing it. And then they'll dismiss that from their life. And then they dismiss themselves from proper preparation. Well, and people say, well, I'm just called. I'm called. I know I'm called to preach. You may be called to preach, but you can't let the call dismiss you from preparation. I knew, and this is one of the things that for me, um, I had no idea that God would call me to pastor. I had no idea. I had, from the time I was young, I had travel in me. I don't know how to say it other than that. I didn't even know what it meant. I just knew that I liked going. I liked change. I liked that every day be different. I liked that. Not everybody likes that. I liked that. Um, But I did not know that, that pastoring would be part of my preparation for traveling. Because who would have thought to prepare to travel, your pastor. <laughs> because pastoring is stationary. Uh-huh. It's local. Right. You're staying in one location. Uh-huh. I had no idea that God would call me to pastor for a time. That was not my highest call. That was my preparation call. Uh-huh. That was where God prepared me for what he had for me in the highest role. Right. But... Um, I, when my husband, we started the church here in Murrieta, California, and, and my husband said to me, you're the pastor. I said, I'm not the pastor. I'm not the pastor. You need to get a pastor in here because my husband was traveling. Why did I think that I wasn't called to pastor? Because I had travel in me. I thought that's what I'm supposed to be doing is traveling. I'm supposed to be traveling with my husband, not staying at home pastoring. So when my husband would say, you're called to be pastor, I said, no, I'm not. No, I'm not. God didn't tell me that. And I certainly didn't ask him. Why? Because I thought I knew. Why? I recognized what was in me, but I was missing what was right in front of me. What was right in front of me? Pastoring. But see, I was focused in on what was to be the future. This is where people get off course. They recognize in their spirit something. They can discern it perceive it, and they become unsettled at what's right in front of them because they're focused on what's to be their future. What's that mean? Focus on what's right in front of you. Pay attention to that. God will bring people into your life to help you prepare for what you're called to. So don't diminish what's right in front of you to do. Don't say, no, I know I'm supposed to have my own business. Wait a minute. Did God tell you to work with another man so you could be trained and you could learn the bi- the business side of it? You could learn the skill of the craft, but you also need to know how to handle the financial end, the investment end. There's many layers to this. You can't just know, wait a minute, I'm called to have my own business. You've got to be trained and prepared by somebody who knows something more than you so that you don't learn by error. You don't learn by messing it up. We can all learn messing it up, but who wants to learn that way? 
Amen. 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 So what do we do? We allow ourselves to be prepared, even though we can know in us, God has something more. But what's that mean? Get your attention off of what's to be later and put your hand faithfully to what's right in front of you and keep your affection on what's right in front of you so you don't become bored with the routine of preparation. Do you know being a sheep, there's a lot of, there's a lot of routine. Look at the animal kingdom. There's a lot of routine for a sheep and a shepherd. The shepherd gets up every morning. He does certain things with the sheep. They do certain things just every day. There's a routine to it. There's a routine to being, to being a sheep in God's sheepfold. There's a routine to it. But don't ever diminish it and get bored with it because your routine is your foundation for success when it's built on the Word. Amen. So Jesus was not born to be a carpenter. That's not... That's not what he's born for. But for 30 years, he did what he was not born for. 30 years, he was a carpenter. Working alongside his family, working alongside his dad. He did that for 30 years. He did, don't you know, he knew he was to be the savior. Sure, he knew. He had to find that in the word himself. He had to find himself in the word. But once he found himself, and you know, his own spirit knew, I'm not fulfilling my highest role as I build tables or as I build furniture, even though he would have done a masterful job at it. That's not what I'm born for. That that didn't satisfy his insights. It didn't satisfy the calling. It didn't satisfy the plan of God. Yet it was part of the preparation. Why? Because God can prepare you in the everyday responsibilities of life for a supernatural call. People think they have to be in a spiritual role to be prepared spiritually. That's not true. God prepares you spiritually while you're doing natural responsibilities. Amen. Meaning this, you can be an electrician. And while you're doing the work every day faithfully being an electrician, God is building things in you that will help you be a success in your spiritual life. He's help, He's building your character, teaching you to live by the truth of your word, teaching you to... to um, to put the, put the word in your mouth and use your faith on the job. He, he's using the everyday responsibilities. He's not using the spectacular to build your life on. He's using the routine of everyday obedience and faithfulness. Amen. Don't get bored with it because that's going to determine how successful you can be going forward. Jesus for 30 years did not, he didn't get in a rush and say, you know, I'm tired of this. I know, you know, he didn't say at 21, I know it all. No, he didn't step out before he was anointed. You say, well, he was always anointed. No, no, he was all, listen, the anointing came on him when he was 30, when he was baptized at the river Jordan, the Holy Ghost came on him to fulfill the ministry. But until that time, he was graced for one thing, prepare. For 30 years, he was graced to prepare to save the world. He was prepared to save the world while he was doing the everyday responsibilities of a carpenter. I'm just saying, people people think that God's only training us in the spiritual, on spiritual things. That's not true. Every day, we should be employing our faith. Every day, our hearts should be engaged. Every day, we're giving our best. Every day, we're turning our hearts toward God. No matter whether you're an electrician, a banker, whether you're working on computers, whether you're a secretary somewhere, it doesn't matter the the role necessarily. It matters that we do the right thing every day with our insides. That's part of the preparation, uh, preparing for what we're called to. Don't you know the devil would have loved to tell Jesus, Your time is short. You don't have long to save the world. You better hurry. You better hurry. What would he love to do? Shorten the preparation time because then he would have faltered. But Jesus did not step out ahead of when God propelled him, anointed him at the river Jordan, and then he was launched forward into what he was born for. See, if you don't have a pastor, you're not taught these things. This is where you learn to do the routine every day part of being a sheep, part of just faithfully bringing your part to the local church, receiving of your pastor, um, uh, being, being the proper role in your family, <clears throat> using your faith every day, the everyday things. Don't let what you know 
is in your future take you off course from today. And I've seen it time and time again when people say, well, I know I'm called to pastor, then you better get prepared. Mm -hmm. Uh, Or I know I'm called to evangelize, then you better be prepared. Now, don't misunderstand me. That preparation time will look different for different people. I've seen God prepare people on the job. I've seen God prepare other people just being an assist to someone. God prepares each one in different ways. God didn't, I, I never went to Bible school. My husband was my Bible school. God wanted someone who had not been to Bible school so that my husband could train someone to flow with him. And that's why God, when I asked God, can I go to Bible school? He says, no, I want your husband training you. Why? Because I was to flow with my husband. God didn't want someone else training me to flow with my husband. He wanted my husband training me to flow with him. So what's that mean? Preparation looks different for everyone, but everyone needs a pastor. That's yes. right. yes. And everyone needs to be prepared, however God directs that. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Why? Because the call is not the preparation. Mm-hmm. Yeah. God calls us, but we are the ones that qualify. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Many are called, few are chosen. Yes. Many are called, yeah. few are chosen. Why are few chosen? Because few will separate themselves and consecrate themselves yeah. to be prepared for the call. Yeah. Some want the call. They don't want the preparation. I want the preparation. I, until you learn to value the preparation, you're not ready for what you're called to. Value the preparation. That's your success. Listen, Jesus prepared for 30, 30 years, three years, won the world. Paid the price for the world. Paid the price for humanity. It doesn't take long when you're prepared. He went out and demonstrated the power of God, the anointing of God. Didn't take him long because he was prepared. Well, we're teaching out of my book, Visitations from God. You don't want to miss it. Get your copy. You can get it by going to JesusTheHealer.org and purchase it there. And until next time, remember this, Jesus is the healer. God bless you. To watch or listen to today's message and other messages by Nancy Dufresne, visit DufresneMinistries.org. God has provided a way for His children to have ongoing visitations from Him. But many Christians don't recognize these visitations. Your life will be changed as you meditate on the revelations in this book, Visitations from God by Nancy Dufresne. Order your copy now at DufresneMinistries.org. We invite you to join us for our annual Ladies' Conference at World Harvest Church in Marietta, California from October 1st through the 3rd. The speakers will be Nancy Dufresne, Pat Harrison, and Deborah Simons. Everyone is welcome to attend. For more information or to register for in-person attendance, please visit our website at DufresneMinistries.org. If you have received a healing or have any other testimony to share with us as a result of this broadcast, we would love to hear about it. Please call us, write us, or contact us through our website. We trust you've enjoyed this message. Visit us at DufresneMinistries.org to learn of our upcoming meetings, share your testimony, submit a prayer request, or visit our online store. Thank you to the friends and partners of Dufresne Ministries for making this production possible. This is Nancy Dufresne, and I want to extend an invitation to you to become a partner with Dufresne Ministries today. God bless you. Partnership helps with crusades held nationwide and abroad, printing and publishing of books and other materials, operational costs in TV and other media broadcasts. For more information and to sign up to become a partner, go to DufresneMinistries.org.